Hiya! Hiya, everybody! How y'all doing, everybody? <laughs> I taught them all he knew. Well, I lie. Pastor Randy teaches them all he knows. Oh, we're so welcome that you're here. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to, to Bayside. Guys, let's, uh, let's do something. There's a wonderful thing going on right now because there's one church in many locations, different campuses, jails, penitentiaries, people online. We're all getting together. So let's welcome each other as we join each other right now, everybody. Good to see you all. So glad you're here this weekend. What a joy to open God's Word together. And uh, my name is David Murphy, and I get to serve, as I get the honor to serve at the North River Campus. And Pastor Randy, under the leadership of Pastor Randy, and he said, Dave, would you teach God's Word this weekend? I said, yes, sir, love to, love to. So I'm glad you're here. And, and actually, this is a very special week, because this week, we run up to, and if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you, if you know him and trust him, next weekend is a very, very, very special weekend. Because I know every Sunday and every Saturday when we gather, we, are, we, we remember who God is and what he's done. But it's Easter Resurrection Weekend, and it is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate. And people from all around the globe, people will be worshiping together that weekend. So please, 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 please invest in the life of someone and invite them to go to one of the services at all our campuses. Guys, you can't drag anybody. To, well, at least you shouldn't be dragging anybody to church. But you can't save them. We can't save them. But your invitation, your invite, your ask, statistic tells us that many want to go to church a weekend, like Easter. They just don't know where to go. So maybe it's that friend, that family member, that gym instructor, that teacher, that public worker, that person that you're going to meet this week that you're just going to go, hey, if you're looking for somewhere to go for Easter, it's going to be good. These are the campuses, whatever it is, then pray and leave it with the Lord. But if they do appear, they come, and then they hear the good news of Jesus Christ, that God is for them, not against them, their whole eternity will be changed because of your faithfulness. So let's put it in God's hand, and this week, just prepare your heart to come to all our campuses. Let's fill up our campuses just in the, exalting, in the exaltation of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So let's pray together as we come to God's Word. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the privilege to open your word in a language we understand. And I pray now that as we, as we allow your spirit to use your word, Lord, Lord, comfort us and encourage us, but also challenge us, Lord, so that we can be the people you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We are in, at the end of a six-week series. Six-week series on, we've called it, uh, fit to fight. And it's, how do we get prepared when this world is crazy? Marriage is tough. Parenting, ah, we buns is okay. And then uh, parenting. You know, it seems to be, you know, when you get that HOA letter that comes through the post and through the mail and it tells you your blade of grass is out of place and something inside of you goes, Rah. why is it so hard to be single in today's world? Why is it so hard when finances and everything's so expensive? Why is it so hard to lose weight? <laughs> it seems that we're involved in a battle. We are in the physical realm trying to do all we can, but as we have seen over the last now five weeks, six weeks today, the Bible shows us, it peels back the curtain a little bit and gives us an insight, and we realize that the battle in the physical is won in the spiritual. The battle in the seen world actually is won in the unseen world. And over the last five weeks, our pastor and Pastor Bernard and the teaching team have been teaching us what God says because there, it is tough. Life is tough. Life is hard. 
So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. That's been the passage that we have been working from and looking at because we get to see what God has done and what God says on the issue. And I pray that it'll be an encouragement and a challenge to us this weekend so that we can live this week with what God says. Let's read it together. Ephesians chapter 6. It's the end of the letter to the Ephesian church. He's done a lot of teaching. He's done a lot of practical teaching. And then the author Paul says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, in light of that, because of that, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, so that when you get confused, when you get attacked, when that person is driving crazy in front of you with a Bayside sticker, So that when the doctor gives you news, the bank says something, your job and employers, when there's an attack or an accusation happen, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. God tells us the curtain pulls back a little and we realize and we learn a few things. And I want you to use your imagination right now because I want to just illustrate something for us right here. Imagine, 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 I get a call from the U.S. soccer coach. And he goes, Dave, I know you're not born in America, but you're a great football play, soccer player. And we want you to represent the USA. Oh, I would be so honored. I wouldn't tell anybody. Well, I will tell social media so that maybe some of you would watch. And imagine, imagine you're watching the game and you're going like, oh, Dave's playing, wow. And the camera starts to span down the players and we're all singing the national anthem and the camera goes along and there's me at the end dressed in a kilt. <laughs> imagine, you're probably going to go, what an idiot, what's he doing? How can he play with a kilt on? Imagine, imagine going to the beach to enjoy the beach in a tux. It doesn't really fit, unless you're going to get married, okay? But I mean, to go and swim and sunbathe, it doesn't fit. Imagine our, our, our men and women in the military going into battle with shorts and flip-flops. Well, why is it then that when we scan across probably the Western church, we've got everybody who looks good on the outside, but we're not dressed on the inside. And the enemy is kicking our butt because we're not dressed for the battle. When we see this passage, when it was written, everybody would have known what a Roman soldier looks like. But you and I, you and I don't walk down Walmart and Maximus is walking along dressed as a Roman soldier. You know, we don't see that anymore. Well, there's other things you see in Walmart, but no. <laughs> I'm just thinking right now, you may have seen a Roman soldier in Walmart. <laughs> oh, I saw that website too. Okay. Um, but we don't we have to go to the history books. We have to go to the movies. And what we realize is there's this image that is driven, and, that's, and that image, as we pull it out, there's a couple of things I want to quickly, just an overview of this passage. Two things I want us to look at quickly is the first thing is the battle in the physical is one in the spiritual. The battle is not against your husband, your wife, your kids, the president, the pastor. The battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle is, according to the scripture, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There's an influence behind it. 
The second thing I want us to look at quickly is that, that God has given us an armor, a, 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 a wardrobe that we can wear, that we do not have to walk in fear, that we do not have to walk defeated, that we don't have to get our butts kicked every time. God has given us parts of the armor in the spiritual realm that has ramifications in the physical realm. So when we are fighting and there's accusations and there's things coming your way and you don't know what's going on and you're in the middle of a confusion, you can put on these pieces and they will help you. What? Stand firm. Be strong in the Lord. So let's look. The last five weeks, we've been talking about them. So if you haven't watched or you don't know, or you may be even here and you don't even believe in Jesus, I'm so glad you're here. I want you to engage with what God says and use your mind. Don't throw out your mind. So I'm so glad you're here. So go back on, online and watch the services and watch what they're teaching because I'm coming to the end. In the first one we see, the first one, that he says, put on the belt of truth. The belt was very important for the Roman soldier because it held everything together. And it was connected to truth. And today's world where truth is relevant and your truth can be your truth and my truth can be your truth, that's not truth. So where do we go? We go to the one who is exclusive. He exclusively claims to be the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And not only that, I'm gonna prove it to you by dying and raising again. I'm gonna have witnesses. I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna give you my word throughout history. It's gonna be absolutely everything you need. And Jesus is the truth. So if we wanna know the truth, you have to go what Jesus is. That is foundational in your armor. The second thing it says, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate split protected the main organs, especially the heart, which is the seat of emotions. This breast split was to be reminded us that the right to us nest, the right way, the right standing before God is given by Christ. You put that on and then you begin to live the right way, God's way. So when there's accusation, when people are saying, it bounces off you. Why? Because it's not true. You're, if you want God's blessing, you do it God's way. Then the third piece was the sandal of the peace of uh, the gospel, of peace. It was the peace of of God and the peace with God and it's connected to the shoes, to the, to the footwear, to the, as what the young people call it, the kicks. I didn't even know what that was. Someone says, nice kicks. I went, Kais, what? Nice shoes. Oh, thank you. But when you have the peace of God and your peace, peace with God, you can be stable in tough times. The peace is not in a pill, but in the gospel. <laughs> Some of you, yeah, well, I read that, it's not mine. Uh, <laughs> the next thing we see is the shield of faith. And I wanted to notice that the way, see the way the passages have written? The first three pieces of the armor, the verb to be is used, having, having, having. You, put, you have that on all the time. Truth, you don't take it off. The righteousness of Christ, you don't take it off. It's by God, okay? Peace is with God. You have it all the time. The next three pieces, he uses the term to take, to have. So in other words, you pick it up as need be. And this one, the shield of faith. Faith is believing God instead of what mom said, granny said, TV said, social media said, culture said, what TV show said. I love what Tony Evans, a pastor, how he defines it. He says, faith is acting like something is so in order that it may be so simply because God said so. I love it. Faith is acting like something is so in order that it may be so simply because God said so. Faith is, you know, when it comes attack and accusations and you know, how can you believe that? You say, Lord, right now, I just, I just stand behind your faith. I, I trust you right now, Lord. The other piece that we saw last week was the helmet of salvation that protects the, the mind when the accusations come, when, when it says in, the helmet of salvation, when you're not good enough and God doesn't love you and you're not worth it and you, how could you do that if you say you're a Christ follower? We need to take on that helmet and realize, wait a minute, salvation is a gift from God by faith through grace. Ephesians chapter two, not 
in my work so I can boast, but it's a gift from God. So therefore, I realize that God, I can have my right standing before God and I can be saved from, a, from my past. I can be hope in the future and I can have hope and and, and strength in the present, so I put on that helmet and protect my mind and say, God, I'm gonna say because you say it. Because when we do all these pieces every day, we must realize that the last piece that we're gonna look at today is the sword of the Spirit. And you need to know something from the very start. We fight from victory, not for victory. Jesus is the one that has already defeated the enemy. He's defeated death. He's defeated sin. I don't know if you have any problems, but sin and death are probably two of the big ones. And Jesus said, I got it. You can stand strong. You can stand in my strength. You don't have to fear. So let's look at the last piece, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit. The word sword there, there's two words for sword. Uh, in the Greek, at least in what we know of, the first word is when the sword is long and you wield it and you, they go nuts at it. That's not the sword that's mentioned in, in this passage. The sword is talking about the machias. It's, it's the smaller sword. It's a, like just bigger than a dagger, a dagger type. It's, it was used for close combat. It was used when you get close enough to the enemy. That's the sword. That's the dagger like that, you, that they used, the Roman soldier used. So that's the image that Paul has given his readers and you and I years later. The sword is for close to close combat. And it's the sword of the spirit. It's actually the spirit's tool. The spirit of God uses this tool, this weapon to then attack. It's the only armor of offense that we have. So we better know what it is because it's the only thing we have to offense. Okay, you with me? Okay, so it's the sword of the Spirit and then it tells us it's the Word of God. Now, I need to do some teaching. I bend the teacher so I get all teachy on you, but I, I'm, I promise hopefully you'll get along and we'll get the application and we'll all go, oh, that's why you told us that. Okay, there are three words, three words for word in the New Testament. The first one is the word graphe. Say graphe, all campuses. Well done. Who thought you were gonna bring green, <laughs> learn Greek right here, okay. Graphe, the word graphe. Graphe means writings. The writings, the physical writings, book. The graphe, okay. The graphe is not the word that Paul uses in this passage. You know, some of us have the graphe, we have the Bible in our car, in our home, on our phones. Just because you have the graphe with you doesn't mean you're using the sword of the Spirit. Some of us are using it like a lucky charm. They're magically delicious. I said it. There you go. I said it just for you. <laughs> We, we, we use the graphe and we think that's all I need. I just, I carry it around or I have it in my house or I have it like a, you know, like a, some charm. That's not the sword of the Spirit. That's not the word used here. The second word is the word logos. Everybody say logos. Good, the second word logos. Logos is the message from the graphe. So the message that comes out. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, this is what it says. The word logos, message, of God is alive and active. It's not some boring, old, historic book. It's alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even and dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. Okay, the message logos, when you hear the logos, the message presented from the graphe, if what you believe and what God says differ, guess who's wrong? It's not God. At that point, you're sitting there and you're going like, oh my goodness, my attitude, oh my thoughts, why are my motives? And it's like you're getting sliced. So when that happens, you're getting sliced and diced like a surgeon. He's trying to remove cancer from you, a spiritual cancer. 
That's why it's important to get under the authority of the teaching of the Logos of the Rema. Oh, sorry, of the Graphe. Because I'm going to go to the third word. Because Logos is not the word that's in that passage. The Logos is not the sword of the Spirit. The third word is Rema. Say everybody, Rema. Wow, you're smart. North River, you're even smarter. The Rema of God is the declared, the used, the uttered word. In other words, just because you have a Bible, just because you read your Bible, it doesn't mean you're actually using the sword of the Spirit. The rema is when you're involved in a specific situation, you're having thoughts, you're having accusations, you're, the devil is all over you if you want to put it that way. The rema comes out at that time and the rema is the one that the, the, the Lord, the Spirit uses to get the enemy away from you. It's the one that will defeat the enemy. Now, let me, let me give you a, an illustration of this in Scripture. In Luke chapter 4, in Matthew chapter 4, it's the same event. I'm going to read a few verses of the Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus is going to be tempted. Temptation doesn't mean you're bad. So, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Whoa, that messes things up a bit, doesn't it? I thought bad times or testing times was from the devil, but here I read that the Spirit leads the Jesus into the desert to be tempted. Whoa! Tough times sometimes are sent by God to test. Not to hurt, but to reveal your strength. God knows you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. So just because things are tough, it doesn't mean it's from the devil. I won't preach anymore. After fasting, verse 2, 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Understatement of the century. 40 days. I go 40 minutes and I'm hungry. You know, yeah, don't laugh at me. You do too. I'm like, hungry. Yeah. Okay. Jesus is, okay, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. Jesus is in a tough spot. Jesus is hungry. Jesus is at his weakest point, And that's when that scum arrives. By the way, he'll always appear when you're at your weakest. Always. And then what he does, what? He says, if you are, there's like this like arrogance, since you are God. Oh, by the way, you're hungry. You have a legitimate need. You have a legitimate desire. You have a legitimate appetite. Turn these stones into bread. Okay, so here we see there is a genuine need Secondly, Jesus has the capability to change the stones into bread. I don't, but Jesus could. And thirdly, he had the opportunity. Nobody's there. So you have three things that need to line up when temptation comes. You have desire, you have capability, and you have opportunity. Capability can come in any way, with a credit card, you're home at night, there's a computer, you're watching something, the opportunity comes along. And at that point, when those three things line up, you have a choice to make. Am I going to go what the enemy is offering and give me satisfaction, short satisfaction for that time? Or am I going to wait on God to fulfill Fulfill my need, fulfill my appetite in his time, in his place. The choice is there. When you have in that place, this is what Jesus did. And this is why I'm bringing this to you. Because at that point is when we need to have the Rema word, the sword of the Spirit. Why? Because at that minute, Jesus goes, uh, you know, let me give me a second, devil. Uh, let me call the disciples here. Hey, guys, um, I got a problem here. I'm hungry. And uh, you know, he's offering me some bread here. You know, what do you, what do you think? You know, should I do this? He didn't go on TV and see what Dr. Phil said. He didn't go on to social media and see what, what was going on there. He didn't go around and call granny and granddad. And gran what did he say? Jesus, what did he say? It is 
written. In other words, at the point of his greatest need, at his most weakest point, Jesus utters, verbalizes, declares what God says. He says, hey devil, by the way devil, man does not live by bread alone, Deuteronomy chapter 8, but by the words that come from the mouth of the Lord. In other words, it's not just the physical realm that man lives in. And by the way, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ and you're doing really well or you're not doing well in the physical realm, Bible tells us there's another realm. The words from the mouth of God, there's a spiritual realm that if you don't deal with that, it will affect your physical Realm. And it says, Jesus declares, utters, Rema, the word of God at that point. He says, it is written, devil. And at that point, the devil backs off. And then he comes back again and comes back. Three times that devil came after Jesus. And three times Jesus went, it is written, it is written, it is written. You see, when you want a partner in life and you're single and you want your partner in life, the enemy will offer whatever you want, he will offer. Are you gonna say, God, I'm gonna say it is written, I'm gonna wait for you. When you have financial needs, there are financial needs, there are sexual needs, there are appetites that you need, but you're gonna say, God, I'm gonna wait on you. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna let you define them, I'm going to let you satisfy them, or I'm going to go this way. You see, the only way to defeat them, the only way to get all the devil out of your face, the only way to get away from those temptations is, it is written what God says on the issue. When you're in trouble, you don't need to know what David says. You don't need to know what Randy says. You don't want to know what Bernard says. You want to know what God says, because he's the one who has the authority. Amen. You know, sometimes, many times, I'm, I get anxious about things. I get worried about things. In life, I mean, anxiety is, is all over the place. And you guys, there's so much. But I need to read the graphe word to understand the logos word. So when those anxious thoughts come into my mind, I am reminded, the Spirit brings to my mind Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, where it says, do not be anxious about anything, but with thanksgiving, present your request before the Lord, and the peace that passes understanding will control your mind in Christ Jesus. And at that point, I don't know how, I don't know why, but God's word is powerful and there's release. And then sometimes, sometimes, I don't like what I see in the mirror because when I see media and I want to have this and I want to have the six pack and I want to have the arms and I need to have all that and the images that are coming at me, I'm not fat, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm too tall, I'm too bald, whatever it is, I need to go back to what Psalm 139 says where it says, he knit you together in your mother's womb. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I need to back off because God doesn't make mistakes. And Ephesians chapter 2 where he says, you are his masterpiece, unique piece of art. You are his masterpiece. It doesn't matter what culture says, especially teenagers, young adults. Please, please don't fall into the trap of trying to be something who you're not. God says, you're a masterpiece. And at that point, you say, I've been created in Christ Jesus for good works. So therefore, devil, get, your, get out of here, you scum. And then, and then there's parts of me that said, Lord, I don't know, I don't know, because I can't. I can't walk past the donuts. <laughs> but in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God himself lives in me. I have the authority and the capability and the strength to walk past those morsels of beautiful, tasty things. Because what? It's called self-control. Devil, get away from me. And then you think, well, I don't have it all together. I can't have it all together. And 2 Peter 1, 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for our godly life through the knowledge of him who called us. You see, at that moment, the graphe word that you read, you understand the Logos word in its grammatical, contextual place, and then God, the Holy Spirit, uses it as a rema in the battle that you're facing. And at that point, guess what? Baseball. I mean, God must love baseball. The devil must follow because three strikes, he's out of there. You just say, Lord, it's the rema word. It's the rema word. But, 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 but. If I don't read the graphe word, I don't understand the Logos word, and then I don't know what the Spirit is going to try to bring me in the Rema word when I need it the most. And that is why we're getting our butts kicked. 
Statistics tell us that within the church, we are the most illiterate Bible people in history. Yet we have all the technology, we have more translations, we have everything at our disposition. Why? Because the enemy has tricked us. We're not dressed for the battle. You see, when we take God's word seriously, the hurting people are helped, the abused people are healed, the depressed people are encouraged, the weak people are strengthened, the fearful people find courage, the selfish people are generous, the hateful people are given love, all because God says so. He is the authority. When my kids have their little moments of arguing, I know your kids don't argue, mine do. And they come and one of them comes and says, Papa, and then they go back and they, Papa said, we have to do this. Guess what? My word is the authority in that home, so they do it. When we're in a meeting at here at Bayside and we're all discussing things, and if we need to, just at last minute, what's going to happen? If Pastor Randy walks into that place and he says, this is what's going to happen, this is what happened. Why? Because he's the authority in that meeting. I don't know what you're dealing with, but when you bring the authority of the God of gods, the King of kings, the one who created the universe, there's no authority outside of that authority. So when you say, God, I declare I what you say, I'm using what you say, I am believing what you say, therefore, it's the final say. Amen. Guys, in that passage in Matthew 4 and Luke, the devil used the Bible against Jesus. So it's not about reading it, and it's not about studying it. It's about letting the Bible study you, read you. So there are a few things I want us to finish with today. Very simple. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you because we, want to, we love you enough to be the army that God has called us to be. First thing is love the Word. Love the graphe so you can learn the logos so they can use the rema when God needs it. And don't waste your time. You know, like, I don't even know what channel on TV I should watch and what's telling me. Well, I don't even know where to go for news right now. So instead of it, I just turn it off. And you know, you have that partner in life, you know, if you have married and one of you is always waiting in the car for the other person. You know that? You know that part? You know, you're sitting there. Instead of getting, beep, 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 we're late, we're late, we're late. Why not? Why not? Just get the Word of God out. So the first thing is just write word the Word of God. And then the second thing is read the Word of God. Read it slowly. Read it thoughtfully. Many of you want to read the Bible in a year, but then you don't remember anything you read. I prefer you to read a chapter for one year and just let it soak in your soul. And then the Spirit said, you know what, at that point, yeah, that will get away from them because it is written. It is written. You see, read the Bible. And you know what? Did you notice, Michael? Do you notice the ninja master? He had incredible control over that sword. He handled the sword. But that didn't happen overnight. We didn't call him yesterday and say, hey, dude, could you do this? He's been practicing for years. It's been discipline. It's been hard work. It's been sacrifice. How much more do you and I in 2 Timothy, it says, handle the word of truth correctly. We need to learn to study. You might have to turn off Netflix. I can't, please hear me. There's nothing wrong with it. But guys, you know, switch off social media and start to interact. There's so much good material out there on how to study the Word of God. Guys, and observe what God says. And don't go, go, what does it say? Or what does it mean to me? God, let the Word speak. As you read the Word, let the Word of God read you your motives because it's like an active, alive, like a double-edged sword. It will penetrate, it will cut, it will remove. Oh, read it. Let me challenge you, memorize it. You know, I used to know loads of phone numbers. I don't even know my own phone number now. I so rely on this device that I carry around. I don't remember dates, I don't remember things. Why? Because it does everything for me. And so many of us will go, but I don't like reading. Well, that's a lie because God gave us His Word. The enemy wants you to not read His graphe. So get over it. I don't understand it. Okay, get into a group. 
Our pastor said this all along. Get into the growth track. Let, let, let us begin. We love you enough because we want to help you grow in the ways of God, not just be entertained at a weekend. And then tomorrow it doesn't make sense. No, you don't need to know what Randy thinks or David thinks. You want to know what God says on the issue. So read the graphe eh? so you can learn the logos, how to study your Bible, Howard Hendricks, Rick Warren, K. Arthur. There's some great, really good resources out there. And lastly, talk about it. You know, we talk about absolutely everything under the sun. I know statistics of my football team, my rugby team, my 1975 team that did all this and they won the cup and I know this and my college football team that did that and then did this and done the other. Hey, what do you think about Jesus? He's, he's cool. I, I like him. What team does he play for? Guys, in humor, I want us to realize and I hope there has to... There, when you come under the Word of God, there's parts of it that are going to go, oh. But it's for our encouragement. It's for our bettering. We'll talk about everything but not the Word of God and not what God is teaching us. Why? Are we ashamed? Are we worried? That's why exactly we are where we are as a church. I'm not talking about base. As, I'm talking as a church. But God says, you want to be strong in the Lord? And in my mighty power? And the battle is not against flesh and blood or by principality. Okay, you know what? Put on the belt of truth. Find out what the truth is, what Jesus is. Study it. History, geography, the scripture. How do we get the Bible? Study it. Put on the belt of truth. And then you know what? Put on the righteousness of Christ. Why? Because the right way of living, a right way of living comes from Christ. And then put on the sandals of peace. It's the gospel of peace. It's the good news of peace. Tell people about it. And not only that, not only that, you know what? Put on the, take up the shield of faith because the enemy is going to come for you. He knows if he can get the church weak, he'll have society weak. Shield of faith. And remember, the attack comes to mind, so put on the helmet of salvation. So in the mornings, just say, Lord, today I put on the helmet of salvation. Today I recognize what you say. And lastly, take on the sword of the Spirit. But remember, every time it comes, that rhema word, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, when the enemy comes, I'm not going to try to fight in my strength. I'm not going to try to fight because I can do this or won't do this. No, I'm going to do it because you say so. See, if that happens, God will raise an army. And he tells us that the gates of hell will not prevail against the people who take God seriously, who honor His Word, who say, forgive me, Lord, I want to do it the right way, this way, that you know what? The foster care system will be taken care of. Homelessness will be taken care of. Marriages will be restored. Husbands and wives will be strengthened. Kids will be a strong family unit. When that happens, then society is for the better. All hell will come against us, but we've got nothing to fear when we stand firm in who God is. Lord, we stand firm. And today we dress fit for the battle for His glory and His honor in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what do you want us to learn today? Holy Spirit, what lie have I been believing about myself? Lord, what's the truth? Lord, what do I need to do this week to stand? Father, thank you that you have not left us defeated, that we do not have to fear, that we do not have to worry in tough times where the peace and the joy will come from, Lord. We need to submit to what you say on the issue, Lord. So today, wherever my voice is being heard, Lord, I pray that we submit to you, that we will put on the armor and that we will be strong in the Lord and in your strength. And Lord, this week when people accuse or attack or worry, or Lord, may we with gentleness and love and truth and grace not be arrogant, not be pushy, not be 
angry, but in love with truth and grace. Lord, this week, give us an opportunity to tell someone the good news of Jesus Christ and give us the opportunity, Lord, to show the love of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. You may be here today listening to this. I don't know where you are, but you may have never recognized that you have the spiritual need. You know something's not right. You know you're trying to fight it. And today you heard that, yes, there is a physical world that you live in, but there's also an invisible realm. That which God, the invisible God, reigns and rules. And today you heard the good news that God is for, not against, that God has plans and purposes, and He wants to pay the spiritual debt you deserve, you owe. And you may not have it all right, you may not have it all lined up, but you know one thing. Spiritually, you need Jesus. You need Him to forgive you, and you need to now begin a different life. The Bible says that when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, when you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from your past. Saved as to a future with Him. Saved in the present. You're sitting there, you're going to say, but Dave, I don't know what to do. What do I do? I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. There's nothing magical, again, in the words that I say. They're very powerful from your heart to God, and if you've never, ever said these words, I'm going to ask you, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, in this moment of reflection, you know God has given you this opportunity. You, you know God is saying, who's going to be the authority in your life? I'm going to ask you to do so. If today you're making that decision to take the first step to follow Jesus Christ, after seeing the wonderful love of what He's done for us, I'm going to ask you to do something wherever you are. Raise your hand after three as that sign to God, that commitment in your heart. If that is you, raise your hand after three. One, two, three, right up with no fear. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. You may put your hand down at all our campuses now. If we can all verbally say this, just to be in companionship for those who are making the decision today, we all said at all the campus, say, Dear Jesus, thank you. I believe in you. Forgive me. I want to live for you. Be the Lord of my life. And I want to represent you. Thank you, my dear Jesus. Amen.